Welcome back everybody to the channel. Thank you so much for coming back. And of course, you're wondering how in the world do we get Superboy out of these four figures coming off this list? Well, I've already gone ahead and made some part swaps already. I kind of jumped again here, but let me give you a taste of what we're looking at. We're definitely going to be mix and matching a few parts to create the Superboy from the 90s. Let's get started. Like all other projects, we need to disassemble all of the pieces, sand and grind away certain aspects of them, and of course, then primer. Use your preference, Tamiya, Vallejo, Citadel, whatever primer you wish to use. So let's take a closer look at the parts we are going to use. Obviously, this is the Jokerized Nightwing body, and I've already gone ahead and removed the back piece. We're going to have to dremel off that chest emblem, and we're going to be using the arms and gloves from the Red Hood, whichever version you want to use. It's the same gloves. Uh, the arms on this, obviously the one with the jacket, the most current one. There is a notch on the inside that holds a jacket on the peg. Uh, hole that's on the back. I'm gonna have to grind that off. We're gonna have to grind off this red hood. I thought about keeping it, but it just really takes away from the figure if I leave it. And naturally, we're going to use the head sculpt from the red hood unmasked version. We'll be removing that hairpiece and replacing it with the Superman 1000 hairpiece that I've already customized another figure with. So let's go ahead and get started. So as you can see, I've already gone ahead for video purposes and advanced to work a little bit. I've removed the emblem, I've removed the harness on the back, and I filled it in with epoxy sculpt. At this point, it is time to sand it and actually wet sand it and get it ready for paint. And I've done the same not only to the torso, but the legs. I want to keep the boots. I like the high cut on the back, but I don't want that... Uh, cut that's in the center. So I filled that in with epoxy and now it's also dry and it's ready to be sanded down. Now the next piece is the head sculpt and the head sculpt I had to remove the hair piece by using hot water and a flathead screwdriver. Of course I've already had it done to the Superman 1000. I just had to cut it and fit it to the new head piece that it's going on to. In this case the one from the Red Hood. So this is what the hair sculpt looks like fully painted. I've gone ahead and filled in some gaps with the epoxy sculpt and there's still some refinement to do. I've also touched up a few spots with some skin tone to match the actual face. But there's still some more refinements to do before proceeding on to the next step. The jacket is a bit tricky. The glue that I used, the Fabri-Tac glue, did not hold. So I had to clean it and re-glue it, this time using super glue. And that did the trick. Now the best way to go about doing this is obviously you need to sand off that red hood in the back to make a flush surface for it to glue down to. Now this was made using a Batman cape. I believe this is from the Arkham uh, Night series. So this has the close enough texture to the jacket. I've already done so, but I'm now showing you in the video what it is that I did. So I cut off a piece, a small strip, and then I cut it according to the molded uh, collar that's already on there. So it's tapered on the ends, it's thinner in the center, and if you have it too thick or the same um, width all the way across, it's going to be too high in the back when you bend it or when you uh, curve it. So the best thing to do is cut it thinner in the center, leave it to flare it out on the ends, and then glue that down with your super glue, and that'll give you your collar.
Now for the chest emblem, I had a few failed attempts. You can see that from the two pieces that are on the right hand side. One of them ended up with air pockets and the other one had some uh, markings on the actual mold. And what I used was a silicone mold. I filled it in with epoxy, I let it dry. And unfortunately I let it dry too long and I made it too thick from what you can see here. So this really wasn't going to work because it wasn't going to conform to the contours of the chest. Uh, this is the silicone mold that I used. So you heat it up in hot water or hair dryer, mold it to what you want to create a mold from, and then you fill it in with your epoxy sculpt. Let that dry. So I ended up doing a third attempt and my third attempt was much better. Now here you see the air pockets that I got into this one. This one would have been great, but again, I let it dry too long and I really didn't want to sit there and sand and rebuild something that I already used a mold on. So the best thing to do was to create an applique and that's the same thing that I did on the Sinestro figure. So I took that same mold, the nice clean one, and I filled it in with a thinner layer of the epoxy sculpt, let it dry for 30 minutes, and I had a nice tacky but flexible sculpt. I was then able to place it on the contours of the chest, place the mold over the top of it, and press it into place. And this is what it turned out to be. And I just let it dry for the next four hours. So creating the belts was another challenge, not because I had to cut them off of that same Batman cape. Here's the thin strips that I cut it into, but because painting was a real pain. So this vinyl, it's very difficult to paint because a lot of the acrylic paints are not made for this. You actually have to buy vinyl paint. I don't have it, so I used what I had, and it took several layers of yellow paint. Naturally, I coated it first with primer, gray primer, and then built several coats over the black to create that yellow belt. Now, you're gonna have to do that for the smaller belts that go on the legs as well. I thought about using metal wire to create the clip on the belts. It doesn't work, it scratches your paint. So, I remembered that I had that square styrene tube in different sizes. I used the smallest one and created these clips. So I cut it into small thin slivers and then cut off one end of each of those slivers to create a C-clip. I then glued that onto the loop that I created with those strips of the cape that I cut down and this is what it turned out to be. Then I just painted silver those white clips. So I got to show you how I made these glasses simply because I did receive some questions as to how in the world I did that. And they're tiny. I need these little tweezers to be able to hold them close to the camera. And even then it's, it's hard to see them because they are so small. So in any case, let's get started into how I created these. It's tie down wire. The same wire that they use to hold your toy in the package. The nice thing about this is that this wire has a vinyl or a plastic coating around it. I was going to use a standard wire, but I was afraid it would scratch the paint. So these squares are an inch each, so it gives me two inches, and I measured out an inch and a half using these squares. This is about the approximate size for this particular face sculpt. The larger the face sculpt, the larger the wire you're going to need. So. Mark out the center. The center is going to be 
for the bridge of the nose. And now I'm going to create that using another tool that I already have. And that's just a piece off my Dremel. It's one of those grinders, so I'm using the shaft on that grinder to bend this wire to a U-shape. I ended up doing it more than once because I was off on the center point. So once you've got that done, you've marked out your bridge for the nose, then we can bend the actual arms for the attachment of the lenses and around the face. Let's take a look. So here is our initial sculpt. It looks like I'm a little bit off. I'm gonna have to do it again because I don't want to be off center. It's gonna make a big difference because it's so tiny. I don't want to have to finagle this and adjust them every time I put them on the face. The nice thing about this is if you want to have them removable, this is great because the wire will hold in place. If you want to actually fix them in place, you're going to have to drill two small holes on the sides of the, uh, the head sculpt itself and then bend the actual wire one more time at the very end to lock into those two holes. So the trick here is to use flat nose pliers without any texture on them, any ridges. This will keep it from damaging the plastic that's over the wire. It's difficult to hold it with your hand, so it's best to use another set of pliers. In this case, needle nose pliers. So between the needle nose pliers and the flat nose pliers, we can now bend this arm into shape. And it's that easy. You can't do that with just your fingers. Do the same with the opposite side and bend it outwards to match the other. At this point, this should be the exact same size. Now, it may have stretched that U shape a little bit. You can retighten it by molding it over that Dremel piece one more time and making it a little bit smaller. The tighter it fits, the better it will stay on. And that's the nice thing about this wire. You can close it in tighter so that it fits tighter around the head sculpt. So now that we've got this, now we've got to bend it to make the arm of the glasses. So once again, use your flat needle or flat pliers and the needle nose pliers and bring them together. And where they meet is where you bend it. Now you do the same for the opposite side. And then you take the tail end and bend it slightly so that it goes over the ears. And then you can bend it in depending on how tight you want that fit. Now the nice thing about this one more time is it makes the glasses removable. Then we'll move on to the lenses. done we got to create these lenses these are obviously a clear lens I should have used maybe a black or a white styrene because I ended up painting a black anyhow but it came from this piece of styrene this is about 10 millimeters thick uh, it's not easy to cut with scissors and it's definitely not going to be as round if you cut it by hand so you really need a die cutter I ended up using this tool that is meant for fabric for attaching 
uh, fasteners or other things for jackets, etc. And it comes as a kit, and you just can remove this uh, point. Uh, and I chose the one that's hollow. Now, the diameter of this is exactly the size I need, but it isn't sharp, so I had to sharpen it. And I did it by grinding it away with my Dremel until I had a nice sharp edge, well, like a knife. In that case, it became a die cutter. And then I used it to push against the styrene, twist it, turn it until it cut through. If you want, you can use a small hammer and tap it in and cut it out. And it's gonna give you a nice, nice round circle. And it's got a plastic on both sides so you can avoid scratching it if what you really want are the clear lenses. Then you just glue them on with super glue and done. That's it. You've got your sunglasses. I just want to add a quick note while we're on this topic of the sculpt and the glasses. To attach this head to the body, you are going to need a longer neck peg. Otherwise, it's going to sit too low on the body. Take that in mind. So let's take a quick look at the before images, two main figures required to produce this product. And just by looking at these two figures, it may be difficult to imagine a Superboy out of it. But once you put your head together and start working on ideas, this is what comes from it. Let's take a look at the list one more time. Infected Nightwing body essential to this project, two red hoods for the sculpt and the jacket, and of course the Batman Beyond feet because of the style of the boots. The Superman 1000 head sculpt essential for the final look. And of course the emblem and the belt. Now some of you are wondering about that emblem on the back of the jacket. Well that's die cut on a Cricut cutter. Best thing ever is those Cricut cutters. Great for logos. Don't forget to Dremel out those knee joints to avoid that paint rub. And you're also going to have some paint rub where the trunks meet the legs in the back. Make sure you take care of that first before you start posing your figure. In the meantime, enjoy the rest of the clip. And I hope you learned something today. We'll see you next time. Thank you.